Hey Threadheads, welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. So today we're going to be tying a the original of the variation that I tied in the last video. So as you'll recall, the last video I tied a variation of John Kent's Rusty Nail. And today I'm going to be trying to replicate something closer to his original version. And you can see it uh, looks a little bit more like a uh, Rusty Nail indeed. So let's get started. In the vise, I've got a uh, Mustad Signature CS10, and I've got a 1 8th or 3.2 millimeter uh, white bead on here. So I'm gonna, again, deviate just a little bit based on some of the materials that I don't have available. So we're gonna be using some uni stretch material. Uh, so in this case, I've got olive, and I'm only going to be using olive just because I don't have any white. But we're going to be tying a dark fly, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. So we just tie on right in behind the bead. And we'll go down just about over the barb. And then we'll wind back. You just want to make sure that when you're using that material, it doesn't get too twisted up. And that it lays on fairly flat. We'll add a couple extra wraps just up near the top to kind of give that uh, taper of the fly a bit of a head start. I'm just going to tie that off with a whip finish. Uh, make sure we cut off that tag end here. So right after we got that on, we're going to switch over to 70D thread or an A-dot. And this one's going to be wine colored right in behind the bead. And so for a dark colored cl fly, it's not going to matter too much what that underbody color is. If you're doing something with a lighter colored thread, you definitely want to make sure that you've got a light color underneath because it's not going to change the uh, end appearance of the fly. So for the first material we're going to tie on here, I've got, this is actually like a latex uh, stretch leg. And this one's also a little bit different than what John Kent uses. I think he uses the hairline hollow micro tubing. It's not something I have available. So we're just going to substitute with these legs. So this is just a super stretch floss in a burgundy color or a wine color. So we just tied that in behind the bead and then as I wind it back down I just kind of put a little bit more pressure on the wraps to kind of keep it a little bit thinner as we go down. We just want to kind of as we're going try and cover up some of that olive underbody that we've got going and try and keep things as smooth as we can. As you can see there's a, just a little bit of green still there but we'll get that covered up in the next round. So and then lastly I'm going to take some of the uh, Mirage Flashaboo. I'm going to take three strands here and this will help me vary the width as I uh, wind that up the fly. So we'll tie that in just along the side of the hook shank. And we'll take that down along the side. I just want to make sure that we keep that on the close side. So we're going to wind this ribbing first and then we'll wind the uh, flash material in through. All right, so here's where you're going to want to make sure that you cover up any gaps or spaces that you might have showing underneath. You kind of see we've got a pretty nice uh, taper going on that just from a few wraps. If we didn't go with the stretch floss underneath, we'd have to do quite a few more wraps of the uh, A dot thread and it would just take a lot of extra time. I'm just going to add a couple half hitches in there so that that doesn't slip off. So 
I'm going to take this material and we're going to give it a good stretch and we're going to wind that up. You want a bit smaller gap in between in the back. And then as we go forward, we can kind of close that up a little bit. And then we're going to catch this up top. And it's important here that you put wraps on both sides of that stretchy material. And that they're fairly secure before you cut it off. So you don't want that to unravel. Because it is under pressure. If you don't have it secured well enough, it's going to just pop out. I'm going to add a couple nice half hitches on there. So the last thing we need to do is just uh, go ahead and wind up the flash material. All right. It's going to say just just use your rotary function, but I'm not going to be able to do that on here. So you just want to fit those wraps right in between the ribs. And you can kind of see, I think I talked about it a little bit more in the last video about having more of the uh, wine color show through. It kind of gives it a bit more of a rusty nail appearance rather than just like a green fly. So that's not too bad. Kind of missed a wrap at the back there. But we'll just ignore that for now. I'm going to add a quick whip finish to the fly. Then when you got it here, you can go ahead and you put either coating of uh, head cement, something like Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, or in this case, we're just going to go with a little bit of Solar Res Bone Dry. Make sure you got a good coating on there. Then you can give that a zap. So sometimes I'll uh, add an extra coating of uh, Loon hardhead on there just to make sure it's not tacky at all and just kind of helps clean up the fly a little bit. All right, so there we go. And uh, just to show you kind of, here's the one we did in the last video. You can kind of see that ribbing on there is really thin and it doesn't really show a lot of the purple or the wine underneath of it. And this is the uh, version that we've done here today. You can kind of see how much nicer it looks with the uh, a bit of the uh, purple or the wine color showing through. All right, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and get your name entered into the next draw for some of the flies, stickers, and fly tying materials. Keep a hook in your vise.